Here's an interesting early digital clock. It's a Mostron model NM388SD. This clock was made in Japan for the European market, but thankfully you're able to set it to either 50 or 60 Hertz, so I'm able to use it here. Although with the clock chip they used, I would have been able to rewire it for that anyway. Now unfortunately the power transformer had no tap for uh, 110 volts, so I had to buy this little travel converter here. The transformer puts out 250 volts approximately unloaded, which was a little too high for this clock. It's fairly sensitive to the uh, input voltage since it has no voltage regulation. Too high a voltage and it starts ghosting. But thankfully there was a 240 volt tap on the transformer, so I was able to uh, use that. Now I'm going to plug it in and uh, we'll see how it works. This time it came up on a valid time, although that's not guaranteed with the National Semiconductor clock chip that this thing uses. On the back there are five controls. We have fast set, slow set, hold, 12 to 24 hour, and 50 60 hertz. So there's your fast set, your slow set, your hold, your uh, 12 to 24 hour, and your 50 60 hertz doesn't really visibly do much other than uh, make the clock run slightly fast. I'd say it's noticeable. You know right away really if your clock is set to the wrong frequency. It's back to 60 now. Now some of you probably already noticed that these displays are kind of unusual and I bet at least a few of you recognize those as Panaplex displays. Despite being a Japanese made clock, it uses American Panaplex displays. These ones I believe were made by uh, Beckman. All the displays on this clock were pretty worn out, so I had to replace them. I have a pile of uh, old voltmeters I've been pulling these two digit displays out of, but I didn't have any of these uh, smaller ones, so I had to buy that one. Not only is this clock sensitive to voltage, it's also sensitive to a display being out. The second display was dead when I got it. This one was missing. There's just nothing there at all, and then this one was pretty burned out. Um, I replaced these two, but with just those replaced, I was getting all kinds of uh, weird artifacts on the uh, hours digit there, and uh, replacing the second display there fixed that. This is a multiplex display, so really only one of these is lit up at a time. Now I'm going to unplug it and take the cover off so you can see the inside. I think that's fairly interesting. Taking it apart the uh, first part of the way is fairly easy. You just take out these four screws, which I'll uh, do off camera. So there's the four screws. I've had this thing apart way more times than I would have liked to have. So now you can get a better view of those Panaplex displays, individual two-digit displays. These transistors here are the segment drive transistors. You can see there's seven of those guys. And down here are these six digit drive transistors and their associated capacitors and resistors. You'll note a lack of diodes there to prevent ghosting. I replaced all the power supply filter caps. This one was originally an axial cap and I only had a radial one, so that's why it's set up like that. Both power supply circuits are half wave. You can see all my notes on the uh, transformer there. This one actually does have a fuse, which is uncommon. The yellow wire here is the 220 volt tap. That's what was originally connected and I swapped it for this red one here, which is the 240 volt tap. There you can see the MM5311N clock chip made by National Semiconductor, which is dated 328, and that translates to the 28th week of 1973. So this is a quite early digital clock. This is not something that the average person would have had in their home, so... Would have been a bit of a conversation piece, I guess. A space age digital clock. The build quality of this thing is quite good. Really, the only thing it doesn't have that I wish it did was a uh, 120 volt tap on that power transformer. The front display there is slightly smoked, as you can see, and it's got some vents on the bottom of the uh, case. The case is made of lucite that has had dye swirled into it to make it look like marble. I don't know if it was originally this kind of greenish color. Not the color I would have chosen, to be honest. At least it's uh, kind of unique. Well, 
Thanks for watching.